Good morning and happy Easter. We have a phrase we say, He is risen, and you say, He is risen indeed. Right on, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and just see if they're ready for Easter this morning. Look at the bushy eyes. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yes. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. I'd like to take your hymnal. Turn to number 257 this morning. We begin our Easter service. Thank you for coming. 257. We're going to sing and sing. He lives. He lives. Tuesday's going to be 80 degrees. Just smile at your neighbor. Just smile. 
A lot can happen in seven days, can it? Started last Sunday with Palm Sunday. It was a beautiful day, and uh, we celebrated Jesus and uh, the Easter egg hunt. And throughout the week, we thought about the activities that took place in Jesus' time. And this morning, we remember he rose from the dead. So we're going to sing this song together, number 77, in your hymnal. And you got to get your hallelujahs on. We don't have to stand with well, your remain seated, but we're going to sing it. Verses 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4. Number 77. Ready? Here we go. Curse the Lord.
in heaven, living Lord Jesus and Holy Spirit. We are so blessed to be in church this morning on Easter Sunday to worship you and remember how Jesus came back to life and gave us life forever. And we are happy, just like that little guy clapping over there. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us. We love you in your name we pray. Amen? Amen. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, yeah. 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 I love that. I love that. I'm going to ask you to stand with me if you would. Stand with me. This is our confession of faith. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen? Amen. He forgave my sins. Amen? Amen. He saved me from eternal separation from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he gives me everlasting life. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to pray together the Lord's Prayer. You will pray with me. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'll sing the doxology together. Praise God, all blessings for this morning and be with us and be a part of Easter Sunday. I want to ask you to take your Bibles. In the pew there should be Bibles for you and it'll either be a red one or a maroon one. A red one or a maroon one. I'm going to ask you to take that Bible and if you have a red Bible turn to page 1641. If you have a maroon Bible turn to page 1505 and then we're going to Luke chapter 23 and uh I'm going to ask you to read these verses, verses 32 through 34, with your neighbor, and read it out loud. So you're in Luke chapter 23, at the top of the page, and then find verses 32 through 34. I'm going to ask you to read that out loud with your neighbor this morning. Just those few verses. You ready? All right, go ahead and read when you're ready. Go ahead and read, read. Easter Sunday. This morning I've been impressed to talk about these three crosses. And these three crosses hold for us very unique messages. And so you read that scripture about the three men. One in the middle was Jesus. He had a cross of forgiveness. One of the other men had a cross of rejection. And one of the other criminals had a cross of acceptance. And this morning for Easter, I think this is such a wonderful thought about how do we look at the cross of Christ. How do we approach that in our lives and what we do every day? Easter Sunday for me is a time about faith, believing and, and being reminded of how precious our faith is. It's the idea of forgiveness is here for us, each one who would come to Christ. The idea of hope as we go to heaven because of our salvation in Jesus. And so the message always gives us that challenge, do I believe? And every year I like to recommit that same idea and say, you know what, I do believe this story. And when I read it in the scriptures, it always becomes so amazing. You've heard the song by George Strait, Three Wooden Crosses, haven't you? Along this highway. And I think this morning about those three wooden crosses we want to look at. Found some pictures, and one of these pictures jumped at me about the women on early in the morning. When I got up this morning, went out to do chores, the sun was just coming over the horizon. You've seen that, haven't you? 
And I thought about those ladies who were headed out to the tomb and they were going to put spices on Jesus' body in a way of honoring and preparing him for death in the Jewish custom because it, it couldn't happen on Friday. Everything was happening so fast. And they had to get Jesus buried before Friday evening. So all of this didn't take place. So the women went to the tomb in the cemetery to finish preparing Jesus' body for his death. And when they got there, their face of expression, and I like the way the artist in this depiction has captured them, kind of looking in and overwhelmed, as we would be, I presume. Wouldn't you be that way? Did any of you go up to the cemetery this morning? Of course not. We don't head up there to check things out, do we? We know what's up there and how it's going to be in our, where our loved ones are. In this picture, I got to looking at it carefully, and the light grabs my attention so much this idea that when Jesus came out of the tomb and the men who were still in there were shining with such bright light. But I like that the author included something in this picture in the background. Did you see what was hiding up in the corner? I thought how wonderful that he put into that picture those three crosses hiding in the background to remind us of this, where Jesus went from the cross to the tomb and then came out of the tomb. So this morning we want to talk about these three crosses. You got your Bible open to Luke 23. So we want to look at these verses first. Verses 33 through 34. Verses 33 through 34. You read them. It says, when they came to the place called the skull where they had crucified him, along with the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left, Jesus says, Father, forgive them. From the very beginning, this cross of forgiveness was established. That when Jesus said, I'm going to the cross, the whole reason had always been for forgiveness. The forgiveness of man, anyone who would come to his cross and ask for forgiveness, Jesus would give to him. So he says, Father, forgive them. The people around the cross, the other two criminals hanging on their crosses. Everyone there, Jesus is saying, Father, forgive them. And he says, for they don't know what they're doing. So we think about this verse, the crosses, the three crosses. To me, it's all about the man in the middle. And that cross is forgiveness. When we think about forgiveness, what does it mean to us today? Forgiveness is the act of not giving what is deserved, but giving something not deserved. In other words, Forgiveness means I give up my right to hurt you for you hurting me. Now, when I put this in the depiction of Jesus' last few days there and all that was happening, when he started the trial and the people came up and lied about him and they told these mistruths about all that Jesus had said and done, right there my heart would be stuck because I would say, why are they lying about me? Why aren't they telling the truth? But then they would walk up and hit him and others had pulled facial hair from him. Then after that, they went to the feedings and they gave Jesus 39 lashes. And I read this this past week. I, I don't know if it's actually true. I never saw it and I'm so thankful. I never had to watch this be done or go through it. But they said there was a reason they only gave 39 lashes. And that was because if you gave 40, it usually ended the person's life. Jesus had 39 lashes. He had the crown of thorns put upon his head. He had to carry his cross up to the hill. And I think just for him, in his innocence, how much pain and hurt he endured. And yet, when he got to the cross, he says, Father, forgive them. Jesus said, I give up my right to hurt them, even though they hurt me. In our world today, it's sometimes difficult to give forgiveness to others, isn't it? Because somebody has hurt us deeply, and sometimes we don't want to say, I forgive you, I give up my right to hurt you, even though you hurt me. Revenge is such a way of the world, and we have to be so careful about that. But the way of Jesus was forgiveness. Jesus said it many times throughout his ministries here. You've read it. Jesus said it, go and sin no more. Your sins are forgiven. And usually there was a miraculous healing of some sort. Whether the lame were walking or the deaf were hearing or the blind were seeing. Once the sins were forgiven. So the prayer I have this morning, and we've prayed many times here in church 
for this cross of forgiveness comes to Jesus, we say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. For I am a sinner just like those who hung on the crosses beside you or who were standing at the foot of the cross. Lord Jesus, I am like that. Please come into my life. Forgive me and save me. I believe you are the Son of God. This cross in the middle represents Jesus, the one who was both man and yet he was both God. He could bring forgiveness to our lives. Second cross this morning is a cross of rejection. Look at your Bibles. Go to verses 35 through 39. You see it? Verses 35 through 39. The second cross this morning is the cross of rejection. Verse 35 starts this way. The people stood watching the spectacle of Jesus hanging on this cross. I thought, don't you have something better to do with your time than to come out to the hill and look at the cross? But in their day and age, during the Passover and all that was happening, I suppose they didn't have anything better. So they came out and they stood and they were watching. And the rulers even started to sneer at Jesus. He saved others. Let him save himself. If he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. So they're mocking him. Verse 36 reminds us, the soldiers also came up and they mocked him. They offered him wine and vinegar and they said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Verse 38 there was a written notice that had been put above him, nailed to the cross, and it read, this is the king of the Jews. Verse 39, one of the criminals who hung there, even he hurled insults at Jesus. Aren't you the Christ? Why don't you save yourself and save us as well? Take us out of this situation, this predicament. Rejection was all around Jesus on that day hanging on the cross. Rejection is the act of not accepting or receiving something. It's, it's giving. It's that has been given or even purchased. I am not going to have it. I reject it. I do not want it. And the people there not only rejected Jesus as the Son of God, they also pushed him away and said, we reject that you can't save, even bring salvation to those you have healed. None of this is true. Rejection puts a barrier between us and the Savior. Rejection makes it complicated and we can't get there to be with Jesus. The criminal mocked him just as the whole crowd was doing. The rejection of the truth that took Jesus to the cross. So what was the truth about Jesus? Well, John 14, 6 to remind us, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. So this morning, we're reminded of an empty tomb. Is that something in your heart that you hold on to as the truth? This empty tomb that stood long ago. For those people, it was unbelievable, even for the ladies who went there in the morning. How about this one? Many of you have heard this around Easter time, especially it's Shroud of Turin. Do we believe the story of how when Jesus was wrapped in this cloth, they were left there to lay, and the one that was folded was the one over his face, the shroud that was left. And supposedly the image over time has been imprinted with the, a light or a glory that had shined. And when they made a negative an image of it, this is the face that they could put together from an example of it, or a photograph of it, perhaps. There lie those clothes laying in the tomb. You hold on to them as truth, these stories, these ideas. Or are they still unbelievable? How about the two men walking to Emmaus? They were journeying, and while they were talking, they were talking about all the events that had happened in Jerusalem. How Jesus had gone through that suffering, and then they hung him on the cross, and then he went to the tomb, and then he rose again, and it just seemed unbelievable to them until they stopped with Jesus for supper. And he broke the bread, and their eyes were opened, and they believed. To many, it was unbelievable. Even Jesus' disciples had questions about him. When the women came back from the tomb that morning early, and they said, he is risen, he's not there. What did all the disciples say to him? 
You're out of your mind. You're crazy. And it seemed unbelievable even to those who had followed Jesus. And in our way this morning, a disbelief is still the same as a rejection. If I don't believe, then I have a rejection of the Savior, the one who went to the cross in his innocence. In all of these stories, it is believable to me. This morning on Easter, we celebrate this idea. The third cross. Look at your Bible. Look at your Bible. The third cross this morning is verses 40 through 43. Do you see it? But the other criminal. Don't you like the way they say that? The other guy, the one on the other side of Jesus, the one who's listening to all the people mocking the soldiers and the rulers and the leaders and even his fellow criminal hanging there across the way. Even him, the other criminal, look what he says. He asks this really great question. Are you ready for it? You see what he says? Don't you fear God. He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are given what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. This cross, he recognized right away, there was something different about the one hanging in the middle. And at that moment of our belief, just like this criminal, we have a faith, we have an acceptance, an openness into our lives. And Christ comes into that. This acceptance, I love this question. Ask yourself this morning, don't you fear God? Bonnie and I were talking before church for just a full few moments, and it always amazes me. Every year we get these big snowstorms, right? And Monday was happening, and up north by Lusk, it was even way more. You heard Casper had 26 inches of snow. Did you hear that? It was their all-time high record for one day snow in Casper, Wyoming. Since they started looking it up in the 1930s, they started marking it down. The snow came and was blowing, and, and they closed the highways, which is rightly so. And when they closed the highways, and Bonnie reminded me, she was good to say this, if you follow your phone's GPS, it tells you the road is closed. But not only does it do that, it gives you what? An alternate route. Do you use that on your phone? So the alternate route on, mo on Monday and Tuesday to get to Lusk, Wyoming, does anybody know what the alternate route was? It was Van Tassel Road. <laughs> How many of you have driven Van Tassel Road in the last month or so? Anybody? The alternate route is Van Tassel Road. You go right by Rustin and Britt's house, and you're probably still doing pretty good, right? You get a pass off. Maybe you're still making it, but you get to the gravel road, and Bo has this side-by-side -side for the police department that has tracks on it. And so the sheriff's department starts calling and says, can you go rescue somebody out on Van Tassel Road? And I haven't asked him, we'll ask him later, how many times he had to go out there on Monday and Tuesday in the snow, pulling this side by side on the trailer. Then he unloads it and he takes off down Van Tassel and then stuck in the road. The alternative route, it's not acceptable, is it? I think about this whole thing. Don't you fear God? Don't we think about the idea of our route and where we're traveling and where we hope to be and how we're going to get there. And maybe it's better if we just wait a little bit. This alternative route and this criminal hanging on the cross asks the right question. Don't you fear God? It comes to my mind, it's the same kind of question of, if this highway is closed, don't you think a less traveled highway is probably closed? How much respect do we have for even nature as God sends it our way? How much do we respect, or do we say in our own selves, I'm good enough, my truck's big, I'll get through that. Go ahead, elbow your man if he's sitting there and you're saying, you say the same thing all the time. The right question that was asked this day was by the criminal that hung there, and he said right away, don't you fear God. We are not capable of overcoming the sin in our world. We are not able, able to overcome these things. And as that criminal hung there, what happened in his heart was this idea of acceptance. 
his heart started to change and become just like Jesus. Even though he was guilty of sin and, and he knew he was punishable of death on this particular day, he didn't ask for a secret way out. He made this acceptance in his heart. You see what happened? Verse 41, we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Verse 42, then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I don't know the wisdom of that moment while that man is hanging on the cross to turn and ask Jesus for this favor of forgiveness and acceptance was pretty astounding to me. I don't know if I would have had it in my heart to turn and look at Jesus and while I'm hanging on the cross, ask that same question. Jesus, will you remember me when you come into your kingdom? Remember my Easter prayer? It's the same kind of prayer that this criminal was praying on the cross. Lord Jesus, look at me. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Lord Jesus, remember me. This is the celebration of Easter that I have in my heart. This whole idea of this one criminal knowing and understanding that Jesus can save his life forever. This week, we go forward knowing that Jesus has given life to all who believe that he is the Son of God. Would you look at verse 43? Jesus answers him. Jesus didn't have to say this. He had been through the torture and the hurt and the pain. He had been through the long days. He had been through the suffering. He had been so weak he couldn't even finish carrying his cross up the hill. And while he's hanging there, before he dies, in just moments later, he looks at this criminal. With all of the sneering and mocking and jeering going on around him and even the other criminal, he looks at this man. Just like he would look at us. I tell you the truth, Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. I don't think there's any sweeter word that could be offered. The cross of acceptance. This morning we're going to share communion together. Our communion table is open for everyone. And the deacons are going to come and we're going to pass the cup and we're going to pass the bread. The bread will come first to you. And if you would hold that bread until everyone's received, we'll partake it together. Jesus, at the Last Supper, he broke the bread. And after he broke the bread, he gave thanks to his Father. And he said to the disciples, this is my body which is broken for you. When you eat this, do it in remembrance of me. On Easter Sunday morning, we remember that Jesus sacrificed his body. Then he took the cup and he said, this cup is a new blood in my covenant which is poured out for you. Whenever you drink this cup and eat the bread, you proclaim the Lord's death until I come. So we're going to receive communion together this morning. Deacons, if you would please come and we'll prepare the table. And if you take your hymnal and turn to number 159, remember the first song we sang this morning in just a moment. Deacons, if you would come, please.
here if you would. Page 63 of our hymnal, page 63, the old rugged cross. <laughs> Yeah. 
That cup represents for us the right of forgiveness. And when forgiveness is given, Jesus says, I give up my right to hurt you for you hurting me. And we have the greatest gift of all, the hope of salvation that rests for us in this cup. Jesus said, when you drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Do you remember what he said to the criminal hanging on the cross the second one? He said, this day I will remember you. I will remember you in paradise. What we know about this is when we take the bread and the cup and we say, Jesus, I remember you. Do you know what he says in heaven? I remember you also. This cup holds for us that treasure. Let's partake together. I want to pray. Jesus, we thank you for the gift of that cup. The gift of that bread. And how you have made it possible. And that you remember us. We are so blessed to know you remember us. So Father, thank you for your good gifts. On this Easter Sunday morning, I praise your holy name. Amen. Amen. crosses. The cross of forgiveness was the one that Jesus died upon. The cross of rejection where the criminal and the crowd and the soldiers that mocked and sneered at Jesus in their disbelief they rejected his love for the world. And that final cross where that criminal asked for Jesus to remember him. The cross of acceptance. I pray today this Easter you would have that great gift in your heart. Great gift in your heart. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I'm going to ask you to take your hymnal, turn to number 79. We're going to stand in closing and sing Christ the Rose. You're going to stand in and sing. You've got to get your big voice ready on the song. Christ the Rose. Now, here's how it works. We just whisper the verse, but then we've got to get it read aloud when we see where it says Jesus, our Lord. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Verse 1. Jesus. 